Thunderbase Superior North MPP Lees Vargas addresses the NOMA conference. Thank you much for the introduction. Thank you for the opportunity to be here and, and speak and share some ideas. I'm a member of the official NDP opposition. Uh, in my riding, Thunder Bay Superior North, there are 11 municipalities, a, a number of unorganized townships, and 13 First Nations. So it's a, a large area with many interesting uh, challenges. You'll have plenty of opportunities to hear what the government has to say this morning, so I'll focus my remarks on what we in the NDP think can be done differently to support the needs of municipal governments and the populations we serve. I would like to start with housing. Throughout most of North, much of Northwestern Ontario, it's very difficult to bring professionals into our communities because there's nowhere to house them. It's very expensive to build outside Thunder Bay, and that's assuming that you can get a contractor to come out. And then it's a, a, you've got financial challenges to service the lots, to create the infrastructure. The NDP wants to get back into the building of non-market housing. We can do this by providing public land where necessary, and importantly, by providing low-cost financing. And I want to give you two examples. Um, you may have heard me talk about these before. Suomikoti, a very well-run seniors' residence in Thunder Bay. It's been there for 30 years, and they've been trying to build a second building on their existing property. They're a nonprofit organization run by a volunteer board. They have the land, they have the plans, but they have not been able to access any provincial support. So that project is still stalled. The same is true for Giway on Court, the First Nations project that would convert the former Thunder Bay Post Office into 45 units of affordable housing, another project stalled for lack of affordable financing. The market is not going to bring housing to our smaller municipalities. And a well thought out plan to build affordable housing does not have to be cheap housing. There are innovators in our region already able to build beautiful, durable, modular buildings made with materials suited to our climate that will, for example, never grow mold. In Thunder Bay, we have a long and successful history of cooperative housing. This is the kind of home building that could be taking place now if the pieces were put in place to support it. Another way the NDP will support municipalities is to re-upload <coughs> responsibilities and costs that should never have been downloaded in the first place. Downloading has been going on for so many years. Municipalities are given responsibility after responsibility without the financial wherewithal to meet those responsibilities. We know you have only property taxes and then some grant money. The grant money has not increased over many years and that's a real struggle for municipalities. So I want to move on next to health care. Bill 124 was a repressive destructive bill imposed before we even knew about COVID-19. Given the bad working conditions, physical exhaustion, and moral injury experienced by people working in healthcare over the duration of Bill 124 and throughout the pandemic, it is no surprise that senior healthcare workers have left and that even new nurses are being drawn into the nursing agency vortex, a situation that is pushing most almost every regional hospital into a massive deficit. These agencies are taking large amounts of public money out of care and siphoning it off into shareholder profits. To the government's credit, they, there are incentives for young people to train as healthcare workers, but there are no incentives to bring back and retain experienced healthcare workers. And without more of these experienced healthcare workers taking full-time positions, we will keep seeing public dollars disappearing into uh, shareholder profits with the nursing agencies. Another case in point is the situation with nurse practitioners. They are highly skilled and offer cost-effective solutions for primary care. The problem is the pay at nurse practitioner-led clinics, the ones that are not-for-profit, is so low that not-for-profit clinics cannot keep nurse practitioners because they can earn much more out of province or if they, they can earn a lot more if they set up as for-profit clinics. This is not what they want. They want to be well-funded, they want to keep those positions, and that is possible and needs to happen. This is a, there's a huge gap in wages, and it's been known for years, and it is breaking down these holistic, team-based clinics. There's much more to say about how and where healthcare dollars are being directed to shareholder profits, 
or how often people are now being pressured to pay extra for services that are actually OHIP covered. I don't have time to go down that trail. We can talk about it later. Before I leave the subject of health care, however, I want to sound the alarm about the EMS and the rolling base closures that are coming. There are going to be days with only three EMS stations operating throughout the entire region of Thunder Bay Superior North. From Nikina to Longlac to Nipigon to Marathon, and let's not forget the communities on the Armstrong Highway. That is a vast region and it will not be possible to cover that with only three stations open. This is the result of a staffing crisis caused by a lack of incentives to bring people to our communities and retain them. I hope the ministers are hearing this and are prepared to step up and help because this situation will result in tragedy. Can you just get me some water? Yeah. Just get some water. Ah, I got it. Thanks. There are many other things I would like to address. For example, the magic with numbers that make great sound bites but actually represent significant cuts to education. The for-profit long-term care homes that continue to get massive amounts of public funding, no matter how many seniors died in their care during COVID. But I will take my remaining time to uh, talk about highways and highway safety. There is very good work being done to widen Highway 17 going east of Thunder Bay to Rossport and there's at least one curve being taken out of Highway 11 that should make that safer. There's also doubling of the highway going west from Kenora. Nevertheless, there are significant infrastructure gaps that do need to be addressed. The lack of passing lanes and usable shoulders most of the way from Hearst to Nipigon and on the 50 the 53 kilometer stretch between Wraith and Uppsala, no passing lanes. These are stretches I know about. I imagine people in this room know of other dangerous stretches. We are a long way from having enough safe places to pull off the highway. We don't have uh, serviced rest stops where we need them, and we don't even have all season washrooms. Swinging back to the positive side, there's a brand new inspection station in Shunia that uh, when it is open, is catching a lot of poorly maintained vehicles and other licensing and insurance infractions. Unfortunately, wages and benefits offered to inspectors aren't good enough to attract and keep people in these jobs. This is, by the way, a similar situation for conservation officers, wildland firefighters, healthcare workers, EMS workers, and education workers. Wages are not commensurate with the level of risk and responsibility of these jobs. Now you might say, but where's the money supposed to come from if everyone is paid responsibly? I will come to that shortly. Two minutes? Okay. But first I want to talk about commercial driver training and what is happening with the licensing of drivers. I don't know how many people saw the CBC Marketplace program that exposes the widespread fraud taking place just to get G licenses, but there's worse happening at the uh, uh, professional level. So we have um, people coming from the Indian continent. Some are being charged up to $40,000 for training, which they never receive. They're given a license, a key, a, a red for go, a red for stop, green for go on their pedals, and that's it. They're terrified, um, and uh, <laughs> obviously we're seeing the carnage that's the result. It's certainly not fair to them. It's not fair to other road users. Um, and it's a situation that's actually undercutting major trucking companies that are starting to be uh, looking at shutting down because they can't compete when there's that kind of financial manipulation taking pl place. I would like to see testing moved back to the MTO so that no, yeah, yeah, so that no driver is sent out onto the road without the necessary skills. To close, I want to talk about the importance of meaning our public assets as sources of revenue. The LCBO is one of those assets, and right now, the Ford government is working hard to sell it off, ultimately robbing the public purse of $2.5 billion in revenue. And this is just one area where public dollars are disappearing. But to close, think of the infrastructure projects, homes, or community long-term care projects that could be built with that kind of money. Let's not allow it to be given away. Thank you for your time. Miigwech. Merci.